Okay, so you can see from that video um, all of the themes that were highlighted. You know, there was it started with uh, the indigenous um, communities of Taiwan. They showed, you know, views from the forest, uh, mountain peaks. They showed Taiwan's nature. They showed, you know, that the offshore islands, the turtles in, in, in the oceans. So that was the, the video and that was the concept that was rolled out in 2017. So moving on to 2018, again, we're still um, promoting this concept of sustainability in tourism. And 2018 was the year of Bay tourism. So what that means is that they, the Tourism Bureau wanted to highlight the outlying islands in this year. Like I mentioned, there's over 22 outlying islands, including we have one smaller island called Penghu. Um, that was actually the place that, um, I don't know if you remember from the introduction where I'm standing with that beautiful long, um, in the middle of the ocean, that's that's Penghu. And that island itself actually has over 90 smaller islands. So the, the landscapes um, of these places are very, very interesting. Um, so the way that the Tourism Bureau approached um, this theme was actually very different from the year before. I do want to first show you the video again that was made for marketing purposes, just to give you guys a visual of uh, what our, our offshore islands looked like and what you know they had to offer as a tourist destination. So let's watch this video.
Okay, so that was the uh, promotional video used in 2018 to promote this year of Bay Tourism or the year of the offshore islands. And it was a pretty long video, so I hope that you saw you know, just how many offshore islands Taiwan has, how different they all are, um, how many water activities there are, how there's a lot of nature activities visitors can pursue, how there's a lot of food on every island. You know, I keep, um, again, going back to that theme of Taiwan being a foodie paradise. There's tons and tons of food to eat no matter where you go. Um, so that was the video, but what was interesting about the way that the tourism promoted this was that Uh, they only chose 10 of the islands to promote. And among these 10 different islands, they showcased seasonal events. So uh, there were actually, during the year 2018, there were 41 different bay-themed events, all that took place on uh, these offshore islands. And again, you know, going back to this theme of sustainability, which started in 2017, one of the underlying themes of this year of tourism was to promote the coexistence of resources and visitors, as well as the coexistence of environment and industry. So trying to keep things balanced here, trying to keep things sustainable so that you know tourism doesn't overrun the country, that we don't use all of the island's natural resources. Okay, and a, another interesting theme about uh, another interesting part about how the government promoted this tourism theme in 2018 was they used local resources. They ran a show your island competition throughout the entire island. And basically what this was, it was an island-wide competition for both Taiwanese citizens and foreign residents. Like I said before, Taiwan is an English-friendly country. So both foreigners and citizens could partake in this competition to basically become an island ambassador. So they would enter, they would make a video and basically showing the government why they would be the ones to promote their own island. So I want to show you just the clip. Um, this is the English version. Uh, of course, there was a Mandarin version as well. But this is how the Tourism Bureau ran this competition to get local people involved and to get local people hyped up about this tourism theme. Now, have you ever wanted to visit the most idyllic spots in Taiwan and get paid for it? Well, the Tourism Bureau has just the job for you. The Show Your Island campaign will pay 10 lucky ocean enthusiasts 35,000 NT each to explore one of the 10 islands chosen for the campaign and promote it to the world over seven days. Any Taiwanese citizen aged 20 or above or any foreign national currently in Taiwan is eligible for the job. To apply before the June 24th deadline, identify your island and record a 60-second video introducing yourself and your creative plans for the project. The winners will be chosen through an online vote. Okay, so that was a preview of how they promoted this contest. And of course, like the video said, you know, there was a financial incentive for locals to participate in this contest. Um, 35,000 NTD was the prize, which is a little over 1,000 USD. Um, when the competition was rolled out, there were 2 million visits um, to the website with more than 90,000 voters. So basically, uh, people who are submitting to become an ambassador would submit, you know, make their own entry video and then people would vote. And what's interesting about the winners, um, there was a 70-year-old man, there was an engineer, and there was a Hong Kong journalist uh, among all of the winners. And so they were tasked, they won the money, they were tasked with exploring these islands and then showing their exploration of the islands to the rest of the world. 
So with the Hong Kong winner, right, like he was a foreigner, he was eligible to enter this nationwide contest. He promoted the island that he was chosen for to the Hong Kong audience because those were most of his viewers. Okay, and so in that year, 2018, the year of Bay Tourism, where we're promoting these offshore islands, Taiwan actually did a number of uh, things to promote um, their, their, that year's theme to the rest of the world. And we will talk about those when we get back after the break. Okay, welcome back. So as we were discussing before the break, 2018 was the year of Bay Tourism, which was the year that Taiwan promoted its offshore islands, specifically choosing 10 of the offshore islands. And just a quick review, it was a use of local resources where um, a, comp a nationwide competition was held to get locals involved, to create buzz about the competition, and the competition was open to not just local citizens, but also inter uh, foreign residents, who uh, one of which was a Hong Kong winner who won the contest and promoted uh, the island that he was an ambassador for to the rest of the world. So that was how they used local resources. Um, now what I want to talk about is also uh, how they the Tourism Bureau used a multi-channel marketing approach to promote this 2018 year of Bay Tourism. So this will include both local and international channels. Okay, so one thing that the Tourism Bureau did was they collaborated with the Michelin Guide. I think everyone here Everyone who likes food knows what the Michelin Guide is, what it represents, right? Usually lists all of the Michelin starred restaurants around the world. But 2018, believe it or not, was the first time that uh, Taiwan collaborated with this Michelin Guide and they produced the first ever Taipei Michelin Guide. And this didn't just include Michelin starred restaurants, it included the Bib Gourmand Awards, it included night markets, which uh, is a very popular food phenomenon here in Taiwan. So of course, by collaborating with this channel, uh, we get the name recognition, right? Like people around the world know what Michelin is. And now that they see Taipei listed in Michelin Guide, they have a, a new marketing channel for the rest of the world to see. And specifically this year that um, Ta uh, Taipei collaborated with Michelin, the guide listed a total of 110 dining establishments. And actually, that was across 33 different types of cuisines. So Taiwan, I keep saying, is a foodie paradise. That's because there is so many types of food, and that really draws in a lot of tourists. And this was the first time that we used the Michelin, Michelin Guide, this prestigious um, publication, to market Taiwanese cuisine to the entire world. And as a result, um, you know, we also created um, NT $180 million um, in advertising benefits. So that was also something that came from this collaboration. So continuing on this strategy of multi-channel marketing, the Tourism Bureau collaborated with, you can see this train here, it's Taiwan's high-speed rail. Now this train is actually a privately owned um, entity, so it's not government owned. But it was, very, it was a very important um, aspect of transportation in Taiwan. It actually only recently opened in 2007, and they use their trains on this high-speed rail um, network. They can reach a top speed of 300 kilometers per hour. So this, the speed and the convenience of this is something very, very important to not just the locals, but to travel and tourism. Uh, specifically, the benefit of this train uh, 
um, it was it could people could now travel from Taipei, which is the capital in the north, to Kaohsiung, a city in the south, in as short as 96 minutes. That was a huge improvement from what was previously possible uh, before the um, introduction of this privately owned um, transportation company. Uh, previously, people who wanted to tour the island and go from Taipei to Kaohsiung, that could take up to five hours by a local steam train. So that's why it was very important that the Tourism Bureau collaborated with this high-speed rail. And the way they collaborated was they partnered with um, the high-speed rail and basically offered a buy one, get one free, specifically to any of the tour, uh, foreign visitors who came to tour in 2018 during this Bay of Tourism theme. And in addition to that, they also um, bundled the deal. So in addition to those buy one, get one free passes for foreigners on the high-speed rail, they also offered um, packages, 94 of them, which were grouped with, uh, we have what's called a Taiwan tour bus. So that goes around the island to basically local tourist attractions. And so if you buy those passes with a high-speed rail discounted ticket, you get, you know, an even better deal. Okay, so continuing with this multi-channel marketing theme, in addition to partnering with a train that traveled the island, Taiwan also partnered with international cruise ship companies. And that was very important because 2018 right the year bay of tourism where we're promoting these offshore islands you have to travel you have to island hop through usually i mean there's option of, of plane and flight but usually it was through um ships and so this help this collaboration helps to show and promote taiwan as a cruise ship destination where people who um you know let's say they harbored in Geelong, a city in Taiwan, they could also, you know, um, jump on a, on a ship and go to all of these outlying islands as well. Another thing that the Tourism Bureau did to make use of all of these uh, various channels is they introduced Taiwan with major events. So they held uh, different events around the island to attract international tourists who had interests in attending these type of events. So you can see from this slide, the top picture is showing our famous Lantern Festival that um, you know people around the world came to know about. And then on the bottom, we actually had cycling events where people would travel around the island on, by bike, and so that attracted a very specific crowd as well. I do want to show you the um, Jiayi Lantern Festival. Uh, this was the event that was meant to promote Taiwan to the rest of the world. And I want to just give you um, an idea of how large scale this production was and what it basically what tourists got from visiting it. Okay, so I'm going to play this video now. So you can see from that promotional video, um, they showed how grand the affair was. And they didn't just advertise the event, but you could see that they were um, also promoting that area in Taiwan and just the different things that you could see from visiting there. All right, so with that Jai Lantern Festival, the uh, Tourism Bureau, with 
all of its plans and overseas marketing, succeeded in actually attracting over 10 million overseas visitors. And Jiayi is actually a very small town. Um, it was featured in the Netflix documentary about the street food, but um, this was a very large number of international tourists to have in this type of location in Taiwan. Something else that the Tourism Bureau did, again, to uh, reach different audiences and to use different channel marketing was celebrity endorsements. So what, they, what the Tourism Bureau did is they basically uh, collaborated with these celebrities from different countries who, whose audience that we wanted to attract to Taiwan. Uh, we collaborated with them to make promotional videos of Taiwan and showcase uh, basically the island's features and what it had to offer to. For example, you can see starting from the left, we recruited a Japanese celebrity because we wanted to promote Taiwan to the Japanese market. We collaborated with a South Korean celebrity. Of course, we wanted to show, um, collaborate with that market that South Korea actually brings in a lot of tourists who are interested in, let's say, shopping. Um, and then Malaysia, actually, we wanted, we also collaborated with this. This was uh, another part of the Tourism Bureau strategy. We wanted to show how Taiwan was very Muslim and Muslim friendly with halal restaurants, um, very welcoming of all cultures. And so we, we made videos with all kinds of celebrities from these different countries. And I do want to show you them because as you can see from the videos, they're, they're very different depending on which market we're advertising to and through which celebrity. So let's, let me show you this video now, which was the promotional video we did with a celebrity, um, Mira Filza from um, Malaysia. Destinasi baru, pilihan hatimu. Okay, so that was one video we did um, with the Malaysian celebrity. You can see the, the types of things we highlighted were um, a lot of outdoor activities, a lot of food, shopping. We saw the girls went to find beautiful fabrics, those kind of things. And I just want to uh, juxtapose that with uh, the other promotional video we did with the Japanese celebrity. Um, Japan has traditionally been a very, very important market to Taiwan's tourism efforts. Um, they come here for many reasons, but um, you can see that this video, the style is very geared towards this celebrity's audience. Oh, and the other thing is you'll notice that in both of these videos, they've been translated into the native language of the market that we're advertising to. So let me play this video, which was a collaboration with the Japanese celebrity.
国の色たちが教えてくれたのは誰も知らなかった私ミートカラーズ台湾。